in this video, I want to show you how relatively simple it is to set up the camshaft and ignition timing on the Merlin. Um, if you don't include sort of crawling down on your back underneath looking for the little hole at the timing indicator, the rest of it's dead simple. So let's have a go. Okay, so this is a Packard uh, Merlin 29 for Hawker Hurricane. And the, as with all Merlins, the, the great thing about it is you can build the whole engine up. I haven't fitted the supercharger at this point, but you don't have to consider the timing at all. You can assemble everything uh, mechanically and set up the timing afterwards. Um, the timing indicator I was referring to a minute ago is underneath here. If it's on an aircraft, it's not quite so bad because it's up in the air, but you have to get right underneath and take a bronze plug out and look for that little hole there with the torch underneath the lower crankcase or the sump. Um, so we're going to start by timing. We have to time both camshafts because it's a V engine, so separate cylinder blocks. Um, and we start by moving the timing indicator to a point that says A6IO, which is inlet opening. So we're going for the position where we now have to turn the camshaft, so I've got this pin spanner here, and I've put it in position here, and just very basically, what you're doing is the cam lobe is coming around. I've marked the direction because it helps me, um, direction of rotation. Um, these are the inlet valves here um, for cylinder A6, and it's just coming around until effectively it's basically taken out nearly all the valve lash. So there's virtually no clearance in there. You actually do it with the feeler gauge. And then when you've got to that position, all you have to do, this is dead simple, right? You've got um, the spline shaft driving up from the, the wheel case down here. And it has a different number of splines at the bottom and at the top. And let's zoom in a little bit. So it's a vernier shaft. And basically what I can do is, if I, let's try the other hand. it should go in, in one particular position. So without moving the camshaft, I'm just going to keep on see it, turning that and trying to drop it in one tooth at a time. There we go. There we go. It's gone into that position there. So let's push it all the way home. And then when that's down, the timing's set for that bank and this cover plate goes over the top. Um, on these early ones. Later Merlins have a circle of actually holding that um, component in. Let me do the same thing with the B bank of the engine. So the next cylinder to fire on the engine is B1. So we're at the front of the engine here. And we do the same thing. We get the pin span and we turn the camshaft round. Both camshafts rotate the same way. So this one's going to be going that way around. So this lobe here has to come around until it just takes out, we're going to set this thing here for valve clearance, until it just takes out this valve clearance. And then we can do the same thing we did before, just drop that quill shaft into position at the back. So that would be the camshaft timing set. And then it just leaves the magnetos. Okay, so I've now set the B-bank valve timing. And because the valve timing is set on the induction stroke, being a four stroke, the crankshaft makes two revolutions for every cycle of the engine. So I've now turned the crankshaft on another um, rotation until I've come to the timing mark for the magnetos because they're timed at the firing point of the engine. And um, the, the first plug to fire because they're actually timed um, seven degrees apart. Um, there are two plugs per cylinder on this engine, is the exhaust firing magneto, which is going to go here. So, I have to prepare the mag um, in the correct position. Um, I've removed the distributor so I can see the, the rotor arm. And um, it's set in the correct position now. The points are still closed. And what you can do is you can remove on this magneto, this link here, and use um, the timing indicator, like this old-fashioned thing here with light bulbs in it, um, or what I tend to do is, um, because some magnetos, it's not quite so easy to disconnect the coil on them, and the coil has a very low resistance, so 
it's it's difficult to determine when the points are open or closed with a conventional meter. This particular one here will measure down to very low resistances. Um, and I've got um, a fixture on the magneto here, which has gear teeth on it, and it enables me to very precisely... Um, let's try and do this with one hand, right? Um, yeah, it's okay. Um, adjust the magneto. So I'm going to turn this, and we're looking to set the magneto in a position where the points are just opening. So if you watch the meter... The digital readout down there. The resistance of the coil, the points are shot at the moment, so that's a near uh, short circuit. It's 0 0.07 of an ohm. Um, but the resistance of the coil of the magneto is about 0 0.3, usually something like that. So I'm going to turn this um, magneto until the points are just open. There we go. I've got it there, actually. Oop, oop. Uh, I'm turning it with this um, bolt here. See how sensitive all this equipment is. There, right. Let's go back a bit. So the, the points are literally there. They're just on the point of opening there. So that magneto is now set in the position where we can fit it to the engine. And it's not quite as simple as just dropping a shaft in like it was on the cams. You actually have to... Uh, hold the coupling as you'll see in a minute so having this locking device on here this homemade tool makes it a lot easier to um, not have to hold that rotor arm in position so we'll go and fit it to the engine now okay so i've got the magneto sitting in line with where it's going to go on the engine um i can't really do this and hold the phone with um just two hands so the um the coupling shaft in this instance has um 12 dogs on the back of it and 11 on the front there, and that one goes into the engine, and that goes over the magneto there. So, again, it's a vernier shaft, and it enables you to set the timing to a fraction of a degree. Um, and basically, what you have to do with this one, it's not a simple question of fitting the magneto to the engine and then turning the shaft, like I did with the camshaft up here. Um, it's not quite so simple. You have to hold the mag, and this is why I was saying it's useful to have a locking tool on it, because it's very difficult to hold it in position. Um, so you basically have to fit this on, put it into the engine as a whole assembly, see if it fits. If it doesn't, take it back out, move it around one tooth, and keep doing that until it fits. And that's basically the timing done. You then move the engine onto the seven degrees um, further retarded position for the magneto, which then goes onto the other side of the gearbox here. And um, the magneto here goes up in between the V the harness, and it fires the plugs on the inside, um, or the intake side of the bank. You can just see one of the holes there. Um, this magneto, I'm just about to fit now, the first one fires the plugs on the exhaust side of the engine, Oops, which are there. Um, and so it's relatively simple to set up the timing on these things. As you can see, I haven't even got the back end of the engine fitted yet, the uh, supercharger. Um, because in this particular instance, it's just a bit easier to fit this trailing ignition harness um, across the back here and round than it is with the induction pipe fitted from the supercharger. So we'll get both of those mags fitted and get on to fitting the supercharger. <laughs> 